Blade Smiths, congratulations. You've made it to the final round of this competition. Now it's time for you to go back to your home forges and recreate this iconic weapon from history. A bouge. <laughs> Good luck, Blade Smiths. We'll see you in four days. Yeah, good luck to you, buddy. So it's day one. I'm back home in Evansville, Indiana, and I'm ready to get started on this bouge build. I'm working on the dagger first. I think it's the easiest thing to warm up and start with. I really got to watch my dimensions. This dagger, as I'm forging it, I'm keeping in mind that where the ricasso and the transition from the blade to the tang is, I got to make sure I'm not too wide to go inside the handle and the pipe. But I got to make sure I'm not too narrow where this thing's going to rattle around. So it's, I really have a tight window that I need to fit in. Good enough for now. I made some great progress, but I've got a lot to do. It's freaking me out. It's day one. I'm here at the Home Forge. Getting yeah, warm in here, man. It's freezing. I'm making a bouge. It's uh, it's a little bit bougie, I would say. A little bourgeois. It's not only a piece for warfare, but it's a really artistic expression of whoever's carrying it. I'm thinking of doing some sand mai, so sandwiching it with uh, mild steel. That'll just make it that much more tough. I chose sand mai to really br bring the most out of these two different types of steels. The, the mild steel is very tough. and can take a lot of bending, not cracking, while the hardened 5160 in the center is just coming down where I need it, along the edge. See, to get the, the billet down to a more manageable size, I hot cut off on the excess. And as I'm hot cutting, you know, I'm putting a lot of stresses on those welds. And one of the, the pieces of mild steel is wanting to kind of rip away. That's pretty bad news. From hot cutting it, all the stresses on it found a weak point right there. So in order to fix that delamination, I got a few more tries at forge welding it up with the thickness that I have. If I get too thin, then it's a lost cause. I just hope I can make this work. Not only is it day two, but it is also my 28th birthday, creating a challenge weapon in my home shop. That's a pretty cool birthday present. Today, I'm gonna start forging the larger blade of the bouge. So what I'm trying to do is split this tang off of here, and I've got to form my clip point. Then I can draw my length out, and that shape will follow, and then I can start getting that swoop that I need for that bouge look. Time to get this bad boy quenched. This is the moment that I really need to nail, and I am praying that this thing's going to stay straight. I pull it out. <laughs> Uh, that thing's harder than $9 worth of jawbreakers and straight as an arrow, man. Pretty good birthday. It's day two, and I'm looking at the blade, and I'm not 100% on the laminations on the sand mai. So it's seeming to make the best sense just to scrap it and start over. I'm going to use a big old piece of leaf spring and see what I can do a second time around. Starting over with the 5160 mono steel blade, Time is really at a premium. I may not finish. So it's the start of day three. Yeah, I have to start putting a lot of puzzle pieces together and do a lot of fabrication. 60 is too hard. I think I need to tip with this some more. A little hard for my liking for what it's going to be doing, so I'll soften it some more. I'm trying to make sure that my blade gets up to temperature and relieves stress, so that way I've got a, a nice, flexible, yet strong blade. If I don't get these blades softened and more flexible, they're more likely to snap. Right now, they're very brittle. If I heat up the very end and keep heating up the end, the heat will travel and draw the temper all the way down. It's the best I can do right now. I've got my dagger tempered. So I can put my handle on, then I'll slide my socket on, weld that beast up, and we're ready to go. It fits right in there. My blade is completely assembled. It's not pretty, but it would perform. I think it's ready to roll, man. So yesterday, I forged out the blade of my bouge. I forged out the stiletto and got around to heat treating the bouge blade. Today, I have to heat treat the stiletto. Heat treating the stiletto is, is going to be a little tricky because there's zero room for warpage. Because This thing needs to be dead straight to be able to fit in that handle. If it's not, I mean, it could hang up in there or might not even come out or just rub against the interior wall and dole the blade. So that was the moment of truth. 
Yeah, it looks great. It looks perfectly straight. It's time to start chiseling it, the elephant head into the bolster now. I'm choosing to put an elephant on my bouge because that was the traditional creature they had add onto it. And I'd really like to honor the, the, the culture and the, these amazing smiths who are creating this. There we go. So the weapon as a whole, I think, is becoming a beautiful piece. Joe, Benton, welcome back to The Forge. You fellas have had four days at your home forges to work on your bouge with hidden stiletto blade. Joe, how did it go? It went well. My blade's made out of leaf spring. Got a coil spring stiletto and some etched design work on there. What about you, Ben? I feel like my build went well. My blade's out of 5160, and my stiletto is 1084. It was a tough build, but I feel great about it. Well, gentlemen, only one of you can be the Forged of Fire champion, and to determine which one of you it will be, it's time to test them. There will be a strength test, a sharpness test, and up first, the kill test. Doug? Bladesmiths, welcome to the kill test. Your bouges look beautiful, but are they deadly? Well, to find that out, I will take your weapon and deliver killing blows on two pig carcasses. Joey, up first, ready? I'm ready. Let's do this. My heart's racing. My knees are, are rattling. I just feel like anything can happen. First up, this blade is sharp. The point is easy enough to get into the carcass and slash on the way out. It's got a great feel to it. Nice stiletto. There's even a handle that you put on this so it gives a nice look to it. Overall, sir, this bouge will kill. Thanks, Doug. All right, Benton, are you ready to hand it up? Ready to rock and roll. Let's do this. Joe's bouge performed incredibly. It split that pig in half. And now it's my turn and I'm terrified. I've never made this style of weapon before. I've never been able to test this kind of construction. I just don't know how it's gonna hold up. Well, Benton, one of the things I like about this, you put on the leather, it gave me a very nice area to hold on to, and it's ovoid. I can tell where the edge is. But the obvious happened. It's a coarse green structure here. I should have normalized that tank much better than I did. But when you're grinding away long days in the shop during this challenge, and you're just focused on the finish line, it's easy to overlook some things, and obviously I did. Well, Ben, any warrior knows that if you leave a piece of shrapnel that big at a target, it's deadly. However, a warrior also knows that his weapon needs to be strong, and your blade has suffered a catastrophic failure in our very first test. And therefore, you cannot move forward in this competition. Come on, brother. You did a great job, man. I, didn't. I feel pretty bummed, but this challenge has been both very difficult and invigorating at the same time. I've made things that I've never made before, and I've overcome some challenges that I've never had to face before. So overall, it was a great experience. Joe, your blade is sharp, deadly, and strong, and you are the new Forged and Fire champion, and that's a title that comes with a check for $10,000. Good job. How do you feel right now? It's a little surreal. I'm a Forged and Fire champion. I won, but, you know, it would have been nice to win after the three tests. But this has been a totally unique opportunity. It's 
really a big affirmation of my abilities. Yeah, it's amazing.